Hey everybody, Fishman here. This video series is going to cover all the little things that you're going to need to know uh, so that you can build your own uh, small fish tank. Building small fish tanks is a, a lot different than the large ones. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get away with and there are things that uh, uh, you need to be concerned about as well and hopefully by the end of this video series uh, all that will get covered. When I put these three tanks up here, I got them from that bottom row down there and <laughs> there were four. And so one of the things I'm going to do in this uh, is I'm going to uh, cut that uh, sheet of glass for the front of that that I broke and I'm going to fix that tank as well. Now building small fish tanks, uh, the nice thing about it is you don't need brand new glass. This is an old piece of uh, scrap glass I had laying around. It had a bit of a nick out of one end uh, right there, so I'm going to cut that off when I do this. And all you need to do is to clean it. I usually just use Windex, and if there's anything like silicone or anything on it, I'll razor blade that off. Because wherever you're going to actually do the cut, you have to make sure that it's clean, uh, grip free, uh, grease free, silicone free, anything that's going to cause the wheel to either skip or catch. And then all you need is a glass cutter. Now glass cutters, you can see right there, the blade is not at the end, so you have to compensate for where you're going to put uh, the straight edge so that you're actually cutting where you want um, it to be. And then the most important thing is apply even pressure and only score once. I can't <laughs> I can't emphasize that enough. One pass. If the one pass is not good enough, if you go back over it, you're just going to cause shelling and it's going to end up breaking in a very ugly pattern and it's just not going to work right. So you just go once across, nice and even, apply firm pressure, and then all you do is uh, get a straight edge. It doesn't really matter what it is. I use plywood simply because wood and glass <laughs> aren't going to be an issue together. And then put the score mark right above the edge, and it's very straightforward. Just to apply simple pressure, and it just snaps right off. There you go. And it can't be easier. Uh, I don't recommend cutting anything greater than uh, five mil. This is six mil, um, but that's really close to five mil. It's no big deal. And then just sand off the sharp edge, uh, that way you won't cut yourself. And also, uh, I'm not sure, but I suspect the razor sharp edge will interfere with the silicone binding as well. Uh, and anyway, it's just something that's just, it's just a safety thing, so just get that off there. Now, uh, one of the prompts for me making this video series is a bunch of questions I had gotten over the time. And one of them was from a subscriber of mine, and it's actually someone I'm subscribed to, a great channel. Uh, check it out, New York Gold. He said that he wanted uh, tips on how to cut when you <laughs> only want to cut off a small amount. He's had a half inch off the end of something just to trim it. And this is actually one of the hardest cuts that you can do uh, with glass because you don't have anything that you can really lean against. You can try leaning against that, but it's very difficult to do. So what you need to do in this case is instead, like all the other, everything so far like up to this point is the same. What you need to do is flip that piece to go over. And then there is actually a reason why they put that little ball of metal on the end of these things, is you just lightly tap. And you can see that the, um, there's a, uh, <laughs> there, you, there you go. You can see that the, the split is starting. You don't want it to fall all the way through, but you just wanted to get it started. You, uh, and then what you do after that is flip it back over again, and then you're going to apply even pressure. Uh, again, the important thing here is to apply even pressure to the whole seam all at once. I used to know a glass cutter guy who could just touch the edges and do it, but <laughs> he had like 40 plus years of experience of cutting glass every day, so uh, I don't think I'm ever going to get to that, and <clears throat> anyone doing this as a hobby is never going to get that good either for sure. First I just tried just doing it on the edge here, but it wasn't quite enough pressure, so it was just easier just to move the wood all the way over to the center, and then just rock it, and there you go, it pops right off. The other thing you're not going to be able to do, most likely, is get a very even cut. It'll be a little bit more jagged. And what you can do then is just sand that off. Now, those of you who don't have a belt sander, uh, you can just take a, a piece of uh, any kind of sandpaper uh, and just put it on a piece of wood like this and just sand it off, just in case you don't have the tools. It's really not that necessary to worry about. So this is the tank I broke. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of glass off 
and, and then I'm going to clean it all up and I'm going to re-silicone that on there. Now, you saw that face visor. Uh, it's very important whenever you're working with glass like this, wear full face protection. Uh, if you get any kind of little teeny sliver of glass uh, anywhere near your eyes, you're not going to be a happy person. You want to make sure your face is covered. Even safety glasses I don't think are really uh, sufficient for this kind of thing. It's just too easy for something just to bounce off and end up in a place where you just don't want it to be. And so anyway, all I'm going to do here is this is to use a razor blade and all I'm going to do is just um, gradually take these pieces out. The nice thing about this break, there was lots of pieces so it makes this job actually a lot easier because you can just take a little a few pieces off at a time. This large piece right here, I had to I had to dig down. But most of this uh, repair job, uh, there's an earlier video I did on how to reseal an old tank. Uh, most of that was all covered in that, so uh, like I said, this video is not really about that. Uh, later on, if you want me to go over in detail how to do that for small tanks, I can. Just uh, let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, this is mostly going to be about, uh, unfortunately, I mean everything I've already covered, which is just how to cut glass. Cutting glass is not hard. It just uh, takes a little bit of practice, and you do need a steady hand for it. So I'm just going to razor this off. I'm not going to show you all this stuff because, uh, like I said, it's all been covered before. You just need to get all that silicone off. And because this is uh, for my use, uh, I didn't exactly go to as much care as I would have if it were uh, for another for a client. So here it is. It's clean. Uh, like I said, I didn't quite get all the silicone off. You can see a little bit on the edges still. But one of the things this tank is going to be used for uh, is it's not going to have as much water in it, even as much water as it used to have. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a hole in it here. And this is the, one of the, I think, the best benefits for building your own tanks. You don't have to... Uh, drill it whole. I mean it's very easy to drill a tank when it's just a sheet of glass and you have a backing on it. This drill bit is way too old for this. Uh, when I first got it uh, it would cut through uh, five mil like this in I don't know about 15 seconds. Uh, now after a great many years of using it it took me almost nine minutes to cut this hole. And the hardest part of course is uh, when you're breaking through the other side to prevent shelling. A lot of people I watched do uh, freehand drilling for their tanks and you know, <laughs> some, some horrible shelling on the inside. And that's the advantage of doing it this way, with a new bit of course. Now, old bits, uh, you're going to get a bunch of shelling. You can of course flip it over and, and do the other side as well, but anyway, that uh, drilling tanks is going to be in another video. <laughs> I didn't really mean to get into that as well. Like I said, in this inaugural video I just wanted to cover uh, glass cutting and I wanted to... Uh, answer that question for New York Gold to show you how to do that. Hopefully that helps you out quite a bit for that. And in future videos I want to go over uh, lots of other details. Um, but as like I said, I just want to get this started. I didn't want to go into too many uh, different things. I just wanted to whet your appetites and hopefully in the comment sections you'll uh, ask me questions and suggestions on what you want to see and what you need to know or what you want to do uh, for future videos on how to build your own fish tanks. And like I said, that's the only real purpose of this first video. So I'm going to probably do after this, is I'm going to wait a couple weeks, get uh, enough uh, suggestions, and then I'm going to start building tanks and showing you guys how to do them and uh, cover as many details as possible. As you can see, the, the hole in this tank is going to be really low. Uh, the reason for that hole being uh, as far down as it is uh, will come up when, when I hook this tank up. Uh, the nice thing about being in my own rank, rack system, I don't have to tape it. Uh, there will be a video on how to tape tanks and where the tank tape needs to go and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I suspect you know, people are going to want to know that for those who want to put a tank in their living room instead of just in their, uh, their fish room, so things like that will get covered. Now this tape actually has uh, turned out to be quite old as well. You don't have to use, this is uh, green uh, uh, painter's tape, and this roll was just getting too old, <laughs> it just wouldn't stick at all. So anyway, I took end up taking that off and just using it, uh, using the packing tape actually. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and like I said, as this uh, video series progresses, I plan on covering a lot of details. Uh, hopefully, like I said, by the end of it, 
Uh, you'll know as much as I do about how to build fish tanks, and hopefully you'll feel comfortable and actually want to build your own fish tank, because every now and then I get a comment from someone saying that they uh, tried out something I did, and <laughs> nothing actually makes me happier than uh, having someone do something like that or get inspired to make things. It's uh, one of the reasons why I do this. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Remember that uh, the future videos for this series are going to be uh, fueled by your comments and suggestions, so uh, please uh, feel free to throw in whatever you like there, and uh, bye for now.